This presentation discusses what we call our multi-channel ultrasound toolbox, which relates to PC-based ultrasonic imaging. Uh, this work was done by ourselves at Diagnostic Sonar Limited near Edinburgh in Scotland and was done in conjunction with the group of national instruments in Austin in Texas. So let's have a look and see what we're going to cover in the presentation. We'll start off with a bit of the background with the evolution of phased array hardware for NDT and in particular the way it migrated from custom hardware to using PC-based hardware. We'll then be looking at the challenge for the future which is a further integration of this PC-based system and discussing the constraints such as data rates and flexibility which are implicated. We'll be looking at some of the solutions uh, and the approach that we've adopted is using field programmable gate arrays with customized hardware. We'll then be looking at some results and the results we'll be concentrating on will be using re uh, real-time uh, imaging using full matrix capture and total focusing method and the particular point to note here is that this is significantly faster than the conventional implementation of this. And finally we will be winding up with some con conclusions. The phased array hardware evolution started around about the 1970s and here we have some imaging systems uh, which were spin-offs from the medical imaging systems. They involve step scanning which I'll discuss in a short while along with dynamic focusing and where you need even improved resolution uh, you can do multi-zone transmits. This started migrating to the PC based hardware in the mid 1990s however it still had to use a customized beamformer. Uh, the PC-based system was primarily for the control and for the graphics user interface, but the position sensing capabilities of the PC uh, systems allowed us to provide uh, positioning systems for C-scanning. Uh, this migrated further to using what we call full raw data capability, and again I'll be discussing that later on. And this started uh, uh, around about 2001, both for standard PXI and also for the serial interface PXI PCI buses uh, later on. So the question is where do we go next? Let's start off by looking at what we mean and how we're going to be using the arrays and sort out some of the terminology. Here we have an array. Uh, you can see the group of red elements are the ones that are being used for the active aperture at the moment. Uh, we have a pulsar uh, which provides uh, differential delays uh, which means that the wavefronts move out and arrive at a particular focus. The focus location being determined by the, array uh, the uh, delay profile. And exactly the same system works on receive. So if we move that active aperture along the length of the array, this is what we refer to as step scanning. And here we see a simulation. Uh, of the uh, movement along the array uh, to produce a step scanned image. Now one of the features that we can do is because the we know the time taken to arrive at a particular point on receive we know whereabouts the uh, echoes will have been coming from and therefore we can arrange that the receive profile the delay profile on receive uh, can be changed to track that and what we're seeing here is that when we're very close up uh, we use a small aperture, we progressively expand the aperture with range uh, and the profile changes with range. The key point to note here is there's a very large number of things happening but they're all synchronized to the transmit. This is the effect that we have. We're able to track that focus so the focus is uh, even better throughout the range and, uh, but this is only appropriate on receive. However, what we're going to be talking about here is full raw data acquisition. And this has also been termed as a similar thing called full matrix capture and total focusing method. And what we have here is we fire either a single element or at least a very, very small group of elements. And we collect the data from all the receivers and uh, store that data. By stepping the aperture, uh, by stepping this, uh, the transmit location along the full length of the array, we're able to build up a complete sequence and this is the matrix that is referred to in full matrix capture. And the system uh, acquires a complete frame by cycling through all combinations. So if we have a thousand and uh, if we have 32 elements, then it's 32 squared combinations, which is 1,024. 
So let's look at uh, this in more detail. On the acquisition side, we have a transmit receive uh, data set for every combination of element locations. Uh, that means that for a 32 element array, we've got 1,024 RF data streams, as I mentioned before. However, if you've got full 32 channels data, uh, uh, receive uh, parallelism, then you only need 32 pulses to require a complete frame of data. I mentioned that uh, we can fire either a single element or a small group of elements if we want to steer the energy in a preferential direction. However, if you're using a single element, then this is where full raw data is equivalent to full matrix capture. On the processing side, we have to work out why we would want to do this. And one of the benefits here is that every pixel has the ideal focus on transmit and receive. So this is equivalent to dynamic transmit receive focusing. A further benefit is that the beamform of parameters, including the reconstruction velocity, the aperture, steering, shading, and even the reconstruction algorithms are all defined at reconstruction time. So this allows a considerable amount of flexibility and it's more akin to pulse echo uh, holography. Uh, in addition to that, the arrays, the interfaces and the target geometry are also defined when processing. So it means that if you've got a, a slowly varying structure, uh, such as a changing profile along a wing section in an aircraft, then basically you can uh, change your algorithms as you go along rather than need to predefine whereabouts you're going to be doing your a step from one imaging geometry to another imaging geometry. A further benefit is that the reconstruction algorithms incorporate the scan conversion as well. And as I mentioned before, the uh, uh, when you're using all the elements uh, for acquiring the data, then it's the equivalent of total focusing method. If you're using a subset which allows you to do differential steering and so on, then uh, this is uh, then full raw data is an extension of the total focusing method. And here's an example. We have an array on the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, it's as though it's on a wedge, and so we see the refraction as it passes through the end of the standoff, which is represented by the red line. You can then see the way that the beams are scanned through the imaging. Uh, the, the resulting image locations in a raster fashion or indeed any sequence that you choose on this. And one of the other things that you can see here is that uh, the brightness of each of these rays uh, represents the shading that you're applying. So you can implement uh, aperture shading for improved side lobe performance uh, on both transmit and receive. And this would be something that's extremely difficult to implement on a, on a low cost uh, imaging system on transmit.